All right, today we're 14,000 feet above sea level to answer the question of whether or not you actually need to change the tire pressure in your car tires when you drive up the side of a mountain. See, just like a diver feels the weight of the water on top of them, we live at the bottom of an ocean of air that's sitting on top of us. At sea level, the pressure from the atmosphere pressing on everything around us is about 15 psi, or pounds per square inch. Here in Colorado, where we're starting out today, the pressure is only about 12 psi. And where we're going to the top of Pikes Peak, the pressure is only going to be about 9 psi. To illustrate how a change in atmospheric pressure will affect a car tire, we first need to look at this balloon. You see, this balloon size is the result of a balance between several forces. The first being the air inside the balloon trying to get out. And the next is the rubber on the balloon trying to pull inward. But the force that's most often overlooked is the force from the atmosphere or the air outside of the balloon squeezing inward on the balloon. So as this balloon goes up in altitude, there should be less atmospheric pressure acting on the outside of the balloon, compressing it. Meaning at least theoretically, this balloon is going to get bigger. And a car tire isn't all that different from a balloon. There's the air inside the tire pushing outward. There's the tire itself, which is pulling inward. And then there's the atmosphere, which is squeezing inward everywhere on the tire. And the big difference between the car tire and the balloon is that as atmospheric pressure decreases, the car tire isn't going to get bigger like the balloon. Instead, it, at least theoretically, should appear to build up more pressure inside the tire. Now, when you check the pressure in your tires, you probably use something like this pen gauge or maybe a digital gauge like this one. But the key in everything that we're investigating today goes back to just what it is that both of these gauges actually measure. See, when measuring the pressure in something like a tire, a typical gauge doesn't show the total pressure or what we call absolute pressure. Instead, it reads the difference between the absolute pressure and the surrounding pressure from the atmosphere. So as we go up in altitude, provided the tire doesn't get a leak, the absolute pressure should stay constant, but the atmospheric pressure is going to drop, meaning the gauge pressure or the reading on either of these gauges should go up. Now, if you look on the inside door of just about any vehicle, you'll see the manufacturer's recommended tire pressure. The importance of tire pressure being that it directly affects something called the tire contact patch. That is how much of the tire is actually pressing against the road. And generally speaking, the correct contact patch will allow the tires to generate enough grip to drive safely down the road without creating too much rolling resistance. Now, more pressure in the tires should correlate to a smaller contact patch. So in addition to measuring the pressure inside the tires as we go up the mountain, we're also going to measure the change or theoretical change in the size of the contact patch between the tires and the ground. All right, so we got the tire pressures and contact patches measured. Uh, now we're gonna drive up the mountain to see just what changes when we go up in elevation. All right, so we're 14,000 feet up at the summit of Pikes Peak. Okay, looking first at the balloon. It was 27 and now it's 29 and a half. So the balloon's gotten bigger by an inch and a half and that's because we're up higher now. And as a result, there's less air pressure pushing inward on the balloon, compressing the balloon. So the balloon's actually gotten larger in volume. All right, now there's something to point out here before we take any pressures. And that is this gauge. See, can you see it? All right, this is negative 2.6 PSI. That's because I calibrated this gauge at 6,000 feet above sea level, but now we're 14,000 feet above sea level, and there's literally less air pressure pushing on everything around us. That's why the balloons got bigger. See, this gauge isn't plugged into anything. So what I'm going to need to do is reset this gauge or recalibrate it. And maybe it's going to calibrate it. There it is. So now it says zero. So this is calibrated for 14,000 feet. So now what's going to read when I plug this up to the tire is the actual difference in pressure between the tire 
and the atmosphere. All right, and now our tire shows 37.3 PSI. It was 34.6 when we started out this morning. All right, and we see a similar thing on the pen gauge. It's reading right about 38 PSI. And I'm betting when we go around and look at all the other tires, we'll see the same exact thing. Yeah. All right. So on all four tires, we saw a change in pressure of roughly two and a half PSI, which was actually exactly what I expected. All right, now we burn gas coming up the hill. So what I've done is I've added some weight. See our weight? We've added some weight back into the car just to even out any weight loss that occurred as we burn fuel going uphill. All right, so we got the contact patches all measured out, but I'm not gonna know that data until we get home. All right, so I measured the area of the contact patch on each of these boards. And consistent with the increase in tire pressure that we saw up on the mountain, the size of the contact patch shrunk. But there's a problem. You see, in a perfect world, the tire pressure in each of the tires multiplied by their contact patch should equal the weight of the vehicle. But the problem is, in this case, it didn't. You see, to measure the contact patch, I used this square, which of course traced out a square, or in this case, a rectangle around the tires as they were sitting on each board. But the problem is the true contact patch of each tire against the ground isn't a perfect rectangle, it's more of an oval. As a result, the area that I measured was a bit overinflated, for lack of a pun here. On top of that, this square has a little bit of thickness, which means it didn't fit quite as tightly against the tire as it could have, which again, inflated the result. So while I could have parked the car on a really giant, thick piece of plexiglass and taken pictures from underneath, unfortunately, this isn't Veritasium. I don't have the budget for that sort of thing. So YouTube, you do what you want with that in the comments, but I'm just out here having fun. Now, up until now, we've ignored temperature. You see, no different than putting a balloon inside of a refrigerator causes it to cool and shrink. Changing the temperature inside a car tire can cause the tire to lose pressure if you cool it off, or increase in pressure if you heat it up. Now, in order to keep temperature out of this little experiment of ours, I needed to rely on a little bit of planning and a whole lot of luck. You see, here where I live is typically 30 to 40 degrees colder than up on top of Pikes Peak. But by starting here early in the morning when it was still cold out and getting to the top of the mountain later in the day when it had had time to warm up, the hope was that the change in temperature from bottom of the mountain to the top would be hopefully pretty small and not really mess up our results in this little experiment. All right, so we'll check the temperatures here. I'm 62. All right, so looking at the temperatures on all four tires, it looks like it's about 65 degrees on the tires, which means we're really just having the change in atmospheric pressure responsible for the change in tire pressure. All right, so in conclusion, I mean, having gone up the mountain and, and you know measured tire pressures and stuff, the fact of the matter is we saw roughly a person who doesn't know how to drive, oh, California, um, we went through and we saw about three PSI difference. The fact of the matter is, that's not a lot. Uh, when you're just driving down the road, your tires heat up, and you'll see more than that change in tire pressure just from regular driving around town. So, to go back to the original question, do you need to change the tire pressure in your cars when you're driving up the side of a mountain? No, you really don't. It doesn't make a big enough difference. Does it make some difference? Yeah, but not a ton. So on that note, that's all for now.